Hello guys, this is Dr. Patrick Price, the Body Detective, and welcome to the show today. Today I have martial arts pioneer and legend Eric Paulson on the show today, and we have a good show for you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple things, especially martial arts and spirituality. So stay with me to hear the greatest from Eric here. But now, Eric is uh, not just a pioneer of martial arts. He basically uh, was the MMA of martial arts before we had MMA. He was a Shuto champion in Japan, fighting there. And, then he, and that was bare knuckle fighting back in the day. And then he came back to the United States and has several systems a day that he teaches. Uh, the CSW, he does Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and, and many of the systems Eric is, is a master in. Uh, he's worked with the uh, guru Danny Onasanto and been like his, his sidekick for many events over, the, over time and, and knows his systems very well as well. So guys, there's not a lot of things Eric Paulson doesn't know when it comes to martial arts. If he doesn't, he'll, he'll know somebody who is quite proficient. So let's welcome today Eric Paulson to the show and everybody give him a, a good warm welcome. Okay guys, so uh, with Eric Paulson, Eric, uh, in, in martial arts today, the MMA world is, is, is quite big. And then you and I come from a traditional background of uh, years of training. And uh, we see now how the, how the world has kind of changed. But one, one thing that I notice, and I know you very much notice, is the, the spiritual side of training is, uh, is kind of evading the martial art arena, which mainly making it more to like a sport, like basketball, football, whatever. So what are your feelings on that about the spiritual, the spiritual side of martial art? How, how important do you think that is, keeping that in the training? So what I think is when MMA came about, became popular, it kind of hijacked all the traditional martial arts. And it made people, because what they were doing is creating style spots originally comparing system versus system, style versus style. Mm -hmm. And what happened is they were trying to debunk all these systems, how ineffective they actually were. That's kind of what, what that was about. And to prove also to the world that the, the grappling, Gracie Jiu Jitsu at that time was the most dominant of all the fighting systems because the clinch was inevitable and the takedown to the ground. And when most people didn't know how to grapple, they, were, they would lose because these guys would get to your back and choke you. So what happened is a lot of people watched that. And as the years progressed, each, each year it progressed, they asked me, what would it take for MMA, which was NHB or, or Volley Tudo or or uh, it wasn't even MMA. It was no holds barred. No holds barred. Or, right. Yeah, or volley tudo. Anyways, they said, what would it take for that to become extremely mainstream? And I said, weight divisions and gloves. And they said, why? I go, because a lot of people think it's already brutal because it's like an all-around fighting system. And, and what happened is that... Uh, as soon as they turned it into a sport and created weight divisions and then created, uh, put, put gloves on people, they could turn it into a sport. They could sanction it. They could have weight divisions like boxing. And, and then suddenly all the fighters started learning all the arts. So it was no longer a karate guy versus a wrestler. It was, Every single person, when someone said, oh, he's a karate guy and he's fighting in MMA, that means he's got a karate background, but that doesn't mean for one second that he doesn't know how to grapple and do takedowns. Right. And I was seeing all these people saying, oh, my God, he's just this. And I said, nobody's just any of that. Nobody's just any of that. Everyone now is doing MMA. They're, they're doing punching, kicking, throwing, and grappling. Now, Shudo was a predecessor for that. Pancrase was a predecessor. In Japan, uh, there in 1982, 1984, it was established from a pro wrestling background. Everyone had all the grappling arts except for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And it was Satoru Sayama, Tiger Mask, that actually said, Hey, to Carl Gotch, he said, I'm interested to create a, a fighting organization where we could punch, kick, throw, and submit each other. 
And he said, that would never go. It will never become popular. And then he created it in 1984, which Yuri Nakamura was the first champion in that. And then Yuri came to America in 1987. And in 1988, he had his first seminar. And that was the one that I attended. And when I when I saw it, I said, this is perfect. It was the early, it was early MMA. And it was before the UFC had even been established. But at that timeline, I was actually going to Horian's training in Horian and Hoyce's garage. And he was showing me his idea because Vali Tudo was in Brazil, it was there were challenge matches, and it was mostly Luta Livra versus the Luta Livra guys versus the Jiu Jitsu guys. There was a, a beef discrepancy, and they were always battling to see what was tougher. So, so that's kind of how it kind of came in. And it went in Japan. It was very technical. All the fighters were very super technical, and especially in the Shudo. Everyone was an accomplished striker, uh, throwing or takedowns, and then they were very technical on the ground. The only deal is they did not have a Brazilian jiu-jitsu background, which was escaping and transitions, but their attacks were extremely powerful and strong, and you only had a short time on the ground to finish your opponent. Mm -hmm. 1993 i fought in 1993 and early of 1993 and in the end of 1993 in november was with the first ufc once that first ufc came out it surprised the world and it and it made it popular for everyone to want to learn grappling right they're like wow this who's this gracie guy and he's beating everybody and that was the whole thing was to to teach the world that the grappling was something, it was uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. So then everyone and their, and their mother today, now, uh, it was a joke, but we were going to put ground karate on our school. It was just going to say ground karate. And ground then these karate. guys were like, we're going to call it Mexican ground karate. <laughs> so, but the word karate sells to the general public because everyone knows what karate is. But if you say ground karate, they're like, wow, what is that? Well, mm -mm. it's the grappling arts, basically. Mm -hmm. We call now, it ground. We just every call it ground fighting. Got in our schools, it's like ground fighting. Ability, just ground fighting. That's it. Yeah. All right. So, so here it is. Now every school has a jujitsu teacher, even if it's a karate or a kickboxing school. And and now I'm finding that all the Gracie Baja schools are now adding Muay Thai and and striking. Right. That's the so, program. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, and I was in, when I went to England, all these karate schools, they all started calling it MMA. Hmm. So my, my MMA seminars in the nineties were on fire there because hmm. everyone wanted to learn MMA. They didn't even have mats. So, so I'm going to say that, that when the UFC came out and everyone started learning MMA, it kind of hijacked the traditional martial arts JKD kind of disappeared a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. the popularity of JKD, because now everyone wants to learn MMA. MMA is modern JKD, mm -hmm. except for the trapping. and Because JKD had striking. They had different ranges. They had the striking, the punching, the kicking range. They had the trapping and clinching range, elbows, knees, and headbutts in the traps. And then they had the ground locking system. Now, the ground locking system originally that was taught was all uncontested. Now, the difference today is all the ground is completely contested. So guys are learning moves only so they can use them in, in uh, either sport or, or in a real rolling situation. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what hijacked the traditional martial arts was the, the MMA because everyone started doing MMA. So, so now a guy's learning how to strike half half ass he's learned how to clinch half ass he's learned how to wrestle half ass he's learning the ground half ass put it all together it's mma right you got a little bit of all but not a lot but then you get these guys who are highly accomplished as a muay thai fighter as a boxer as a jiu-jitsu japanese jiu-jitsu judo stylist sambo stylist then they have to learn the striking then they have to learn the ground and pound then they have to learn the different submissions now, the submission game is the same as 
the fashion industry. Mm-hmm. The skinny tie was in, the skinny tie went out, the skinny tie's back. The fat tie was in, the fat tie was out, the fat tie mm-hmm. comes back. Bell bottoms were in, bell bottoms go out, bell bottoms come back. Right. Right. Leg locks were in, leg locks went out, mm-hmm. leg locks are back. And they're back. Right. So so guess what? Now you need to work, now you need to work all the upper body attacks because people forgot about them. So so now so so, so it's that, just so, funny. So back to my subject now with this, with, the, with this happening, it's a, MMA has become really a sport. You know, it's like you, you have gloves, you have equipment, you're trying, it's not like a street, you know, no gloves, fingers to the ice type stuff, but. Oh, it can spirit, be though. It, it can be, but the spiritual side is not taught in the school. That was my point of talking about that is you don't see that. That's where it gets lost because it, it gets you feel, lost. What's, what's your point of view of that about how important is that to keep in the systems of teaching? In this day and time, it's yeah. extremely important to bring it back in because what do you believe in? I mean, where are you going to go? Do you believe in life after death? Mm-hmm. You should. I mean, it's it's proven you never die. Your soul never dies. All you do is just change form. I mean, we, we are a ball of light living in a human body, a biological body. And then when we lose this body or this avatar, your your soul, which is your energy, which was God created, come from God, go to God. What uh, it, uh, what happens? It just leaves you, and you go to where you're supposed to go. All right, but before but before you, we go uh, deeper there, because I know you and I could go yeah. there all day long. Yes, I want right. I want to I want to address first of all in the surface area of how can martial artists out there, other schools, other instructors that be listening to this, how can they implement that side of the the spiritual content that's been lost from traditions? Like I know you teach a meditation in yours. What if other instructors are listening right now, what, what would be important for them to know to keep their school and an, an ageless school, a system where we actually students come not just to get in the ring, they come actually to personal development. They come in there oh, to learn to be. You have person. to start adding the discipline aspect, which is bowing in, bowing out. Yeah. Now, yeah. whether it's, uh, you know, being on time, if you're late, you get push ups or you get, you get, uh, 50 jump squats or 50 squats or 50 push-ups because you're late, you ask for permission to come onto the mat. You start the class uh, with a little talk uh, and then you warm up to get the energy flowing. Then you center and ground yourself. Grounding is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe not before, but after. At the end of your training, you ground, you ground yourself you put your sit on the earth put your hands on the earth you sink and you align yourself put yourself in divine alignment uh, uh attached to uh, god creator source energy and and connect to gaia mother earth energy where we are now third dimension and when we when you connect you connect in your heart so you you pull the energy from above through your body as a line, and then you bring your heart line, the energy from the from the earth all the way back up to heaven, and then you center and you bring your consciousness into your heart and you sink into your heart, and now you're you're present at this pure one hundred percent in the now in the moment. That's so, what's important. So, just what you just explained to me how to connect yourself, connecting yourself to the light, to the earth, to be that vessel here, that spiritual vessel. I mean, how many other instructors do you meet that are actually keeping this kind of philosophy in their schools? Well, a lot of people, um, again, what do you want to do? You know like A lot of people, you know a lot of folks in the industry. I mean, are they- Yeah, some people a lot of them, not at all. Oh. I don't know. Do you how many, how many instructors, when they teach, watch your mouth, what they say, and hold people accountable? For the things that come out of their mouth it's not what goes in and what it's what comes out it's what comes out is what defiles you so if you're if you're a walking ball of f f bombs Mm -hmm. you're you're attracting that negative that negative vibration you know and and the thing is is you should be praising people you should be learning growing helping each other as a teacher you're here to help others we hold a high position as a teacher, mm-hmm. as a coach, you hold a high position and people look up to you. And if you're a vicious and vile, mean ass 
guy and, and all you want to do is hurt people and that's what you're teaching, guess what? You're going to get a room full of, of killers that that's all they're going to want to do. Exactly. But how exactly. does that help humanity? How does that help? I mean, what are you trying to create? Because in the end, in the end, when you're done competing, what are you left with? You're left with what you're taught. You're left with what your dad and your mom teaches you right. and how they bring you up. Because I look and at it not martial, president, arts, you're, you're martial, not martial, martial arts schools these days, people come there, like I said, not always coming just to be a fighter. They're coming to find something uh, that's missing on the inside. They're finding some kind of a, a feeling, connection to things. And I think it's very important for instructors who listen to this and not just that, the teachers that when you're looking for a school, it's finding a teacher that helps you look within, helps you connect yourself to feel, to feel part of something. Like you said, uh, Eric says, connected to the earth once again. Not just to get in there, not just hitting a bag, not just fighting somebody, but actually feeling something that's uplifting. Like every time you, I look at when you leave the school, you should walk out that door and feel like, man, this is the best day of my life. That should be the feeling you have every time your school is like your sanctuary. It's a sanctuary. It's a place that people come to release emotions, That's right. to get rid of these heavy energies off their bodies, and, and to feel something again. Connect back to spirit. Connect back to creator, if you will. I mean, I know you're in agreement with that. But others need to hear that. 100%. And the connection is, is what... So maybe if you're in a school and you're not... I'll tell you, when you're getting the crap beat out of you, and you're tired, you got to go within. You got to find yourself. And some people, you connect when your body gives up and your mind's ready to quit. The only thing that happens is your spirit takes over. And your spirit is how is strong it? is your spirit? Do you have the will to survive or do you have the will to just give up easy and quit? Tap. I have some guys that will never tap no matter how much they're getting cranked on or beaten up, they never tap. And you're like, man, that guy's tough as nails. Mm -hmm. That would be a hard person to beat. Then you get some guys where you barely even put a lock on, they're already tapping. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid to get hurt. You know, your body's a machine and people need to understand that your body's a, an unbelievable machine that heals itself and that, that can withstand so much more than we even have any idea about. There's so many things you could push yourself beyond thresholds uh, that we have no idea about. But a lot of people, the first thing that quits is their mind. Their mind quits before their body. But their mind is weak. And the second, then their body starts to quit. And then they have one thing that adds that fuel. You crashed up in the mountains. You're seven miles away in the middle of a blizzard from a, from a road. And you know, if you can make it to the road, that's where you might be able to get a car and get a ride back to safety and live. What what makes you walk to that road when you're in the middle of a blizzard and you all, you don't even have a jacket? Mm -hmm. Your spirit, it's your will to survive. Mm -hmm. And if you can start pulling the spirit out of people somehow and make them find that, then they find a connection to something that's higher and bigger than them. So, so what you're saying is martial arts, for those who come for the right reasons as far as that kind of development, the teachers are there to help them find something within to, to make them stronger than what they know. Like a lot of people think they, like you said, can handle so much pain, but as they train in martial arts, they can raise their, their pain thresholds and actually they start developing this mental toughness they never thought they or never knew they even had, right? You're right. And, and not only that, your body gets stronger. Your body is sore. If, if you're not sore every day, you're not training hard enough. You should be sore every day. And if you got like the weekend off, you go, wow, I need to recover this weekend. I'm pretty sore. And people, what people don't understand is when they run and they're short of breath the next day. Yeah. You just tore your lung muscle. You, your lungs get torn micro tears and you get micro tears when your lungs expand bigger than they're supposed to. And you're breathing really heavy. And the next day, those, those micro tears are healing. And so you're, you might feel a tightness in your lungs or short of breath, but you're healing yourself. Mm -hmm. Cause Eric, I get these, I think, uh, um, cause you know, I get these students uh, sometimes who come and people say, well, golly, they got hurt at your school. Look at them. I said, no, they come already with shoulders and knee problems and whatever. They, I think they know I'm also a chiropractor for some reason, but I'm sure you, you take those students as well. They come in already with injuries. And so you help them to train, train around that injury. And so they develop them. the self stronger, better like before. Yeah, Guru Dan, 
So after my fights, I would come back and and uh, in class, you go, okay, we're going to hit the heavy bag. I go, hey, Guru, I can't hit the heavy bag. I think I broke my right knuckle. And he goes, oh, you can still hit the heavy bag. And I go, well, how? And he goes, use your elbow instead because your elbow is the same as a punch. So I was jab and then right elbow. And I was like, damn. So all of a sudden I come back and I go, hey, Guru, I twisted my knee in my fight. And now you want us to knee the heavy bag. I can't knee. And he goes, oh, you don't need to knee. You don't need to knee. Just throw just throw your right punch because it's involving the hip, and it's the same thing. Hey, so, what you're saying, so what you're saying is he's never accepted an excuse not to do something, right? You're right. And and you work around your injuries. And then yeah. so, like, your, your right shin, I, I, I kicked the guy in the knee, and I have a big old buckle, a big old bump on my shin. I can't kick pads and stuff. And he goes... Hey, we're hit kick that uh, kickboxing the heavy bag. I go, girl, I can't hit the heavy bag. He goes, yeah, you can. You can uh, throw in the right knee instead of a right kick. It's the same movement. And so I was like, damn. So That's look a, at so professor. Many times, I'm sure. You, I'm sure many times you hear that, right? The students coming. Well, you know, my shoulder's hurting. And he said, well, let me see. You have you have three other limbs to use, and you can just put that in the back. I mean, that's yeah. what my old teachers Somebody. always taught me. No matter what hurts, if the left knee hurts, put the left knee in the back and use your right knee in the front. Never let him slip out of that. Like Professor Gordeau, Gordeau uh, had a bad leg. He had a bad knee. And so he put, in order for him to learn or train his jiu-jitsu, he put his bad leg, he laid on his bad leg and he put his other leg in. So he, he'd work side half guard. <laughs> That's how the side half guard became popular. They're like, hey, look at this guy doing side half guard. Hmm. And he was just protecting his bad leg. He still Probably wanted to do honey, guard work, like but that's how it, Like the honey ghost, right? That's how, how it all came about. From an injury. So, so uh, let's, let me so ask you another question. You work around your let me ask you another question about this, Eric. Um, um, so in, in a school, you know, students come – they come to a, I look at it as a martial arts school should be a pristine place. It should be like a, a sanctuary. No matter how old it is, new it is, it still is your sanctuary. It's a place where you walk in the doors and you leave the outside world behind. At least that's how I was taught. And I'm sure you were too. So when, when, a, when a, you have a school, what is your best advice for other teachers out there? How to keep the energy of their school clean? Because a lot of people come there and dump all their emotions there in that school. How do you how do you tell people to keep a clean school energetically? First thing we do is we clean our school. We clean That's the mats. Thing. Okay. We wipe down the bags. We wipe down the pull pads. We don't leave anything the way it is. Uh, fighters, when they come in, you have to clean up after fighters because they they pour their protein powder. They leave it on the floor. They kick they kick it around. They think it blends into the ground and it's gone. So to clean it up. They leave garbage, they leave tape, water bottles, sweat on things. So you have to you have to clean, you have to clean your gym after every session. You have to mop the mats and wipe everything down. We have smell good uh, Febreze smell goodies plugged into the walls so our gym doesn't smell like a boxing gym or an armpit. Our bathrooms smell good. We have uh, the smell good things in the bathroom. Uh, we make sure our floors are clean. Uh, our front floors are clean. You have to wear you have to wear flip flops in the bathroom because there's pee on the floor. Mm -hmm. And and we we clean our bathrooms twice, tw uh, uh, once after the morning, and then once at night before we leave because they're going to be dirty. People people always mess yeah, the bathroom. Wipe them down. Uh, another thing is we don't chintz out on toilet paper. Uh, we had I had a partner before that said, "Oh, we we use too expensive toilet paper at the gym, and the paper towels are." So he's buying this one ply toilet paper and paper towels, and I'm like, "You can't chintz out on that stuff because you know people people respect the fact that you're given a quality, not only quality teaching but quality products." Uh, it's for, we have a we have a water filter on our on our faucet, which it's a one of those pure water filters. And then we sell bottled water also, but there is a there is one that uh, Ruka Gym has, and it's really great. It's uh, Osmosis water filter, and we used to have that, uh, but again, my partner uh, decided that he thought it was too expensive, so he took it out, which is ridiculous because it's the most it's the cheapest 
water type of water you could drink. We have it here at the house. So mm. just reverse osmosis. But you got, as far as cleaning, just make sure your gym smells good. Everything's clean. Everything's in order. And the other thing mm. is you got to clean the energy. Right. So, so the energy is cleaned by playing peaceful music. When you're training, you can play heavy metal and, and whatever you want, rock and roll. Who, who cares? Whatever you want, whatever gets the energy, the vibrational energy up. But afterwards, at the end, play some nice music. Mm -hmm. uh, when nobody's there, we sage the gym. We sage the gym. Uh, we have incense burning like Palo Santos. Uh, there's also a Moldavite uh, incense. We put and we burn frankincense and myrrh incense. Mm, frankincense is a clearer and myrrh is a sealer. Uh, Palo Santos, if you sage, you use Palo Santos at the end. It seals the room. Don't use Palo Santos by itself. You use it at the end after a sage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we walk around and hit every corner. And then, and then what I do is I sit down in the room. I put my hands on the floor. Me, personally, especially if, I, if I've been gone and I bring the Holy Spirit into the gym. I do a meditative prayer and I ask for the Holy Spirit and the, and the archangels to come in and clear the room. Ceiling to floor, wall to wall, northeast, south and west, top and bottom. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask that three times and I'll play uh, some music. Uh, I'll play the shofar, the uh, shofar sounds, and it calls in the heavenly archangels. The archangels will come in and clear your gym, ceiling to floor, wall to wall, northeast, south, and west, hmm. top and bottom. You can also open something called an Arcturian download, which is a beam of light from above the Arcturian download, and then you bring in Yeshua, Mother Mary, Arch Michael, Arch Raphael, 100,000 blue light warrior protection angels into your gym and ask them to clear the gym ceiling to floor, wall to wall, northeast, south, and west. Some people think that's hocus pocus or whatever, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you the energy, it changes the energy mm -hmm. in the room. Now, another energy enhancer that I have was something that I got from Robert Avilas, Anthony Avilas. And uh, when he created the when he put the whale technology into the liquid light and created those discs those harmony disc the right. pen the pendants right uh but he created a big one there was a big one it had the whale technology in it and it's funny because i put it on a stand and, and i was teaching a private lesson and we were at the other end of the gym we were 30 feet away and this guy rolls all the way across the floor and hits the hits the stand and breaks it wow I so it. those things are 400 bucks or 500 wow. bucks wow. i had to buy i had to buy it so so because i was i was it was a demo model and i was showing people in case they wanted one but anyways so i taped it up on the pole and the entire gym has the we've got this whale technology mm -hmm. pendant from robert up above our floor and everyone says when they come into the gym the floor feels so like energetic Mm -hmm. and the only thing that turns that thing on is a light beam when that light retracts off that it changes mm -hmm. the frequency now people now eric when, when people who don't understand what eric paulson's talking about here is guess uh these things some of these devices and some of these technologies have been scientifically uh, uh validated and, and i did part of the research with robert avilas and so we know uh through prayer through meditation whatever you choose to use in your school using essential oils, using, uh, of course, the, the sage. Sage actually medically cleans uh, bacteria and viruses, things like that, and so does frankincense. We know this. But technologies not only clean the energy of the air, it brings the, the person who has a biofield around them, their aura, actually grows. And when your field becomes larger, when he's using that disc, this enhances your field, so you get protection also from what? From radiation, bacteria, and viruses by having a, the hertz of your field change and enhanced. And so all these things, it sounds like, Eric, you need like the Eric Paulson protocol for cleaning the gym, right? Have the protocol for the schools. <laughs> well, mo most of the guys that I, that I train uh, were asking me about that. Like, I could walk into a school and go, you need to clean your school. Right. Because a lot of people dump their... I mean, someone says, well, how do I know? And I go, do me a favor. At nighttime, take a picture in your gym and you show me what, let me see the picture. Mm -hmm. And they'll have 
500 orbs in their gym, which but some of it's dust, but some of it's spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. And these things, uh, it's funny because we're the only we're the only gym in the entire complex right now. Mm -hmm. So our the energy and the drumming and and everything in our gym with the beautiful music and people training that attracts the other energies or entities from a lot of the other buildings. So at nighttime, we have our cameras on. You'll see these things coming. Woo, they're flying oh, everywhere yeah. and they're shooting and they're yeah. playing around because that's their playtime when nobody's around. Right. And the thing is, is if you have a lot of those orbs in your gym during hours of participation, these things affect people also. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes there are negative ones that that try to hurt people. We we had that happen. We had a lot of a lot of these little, I don't even know, I would say they're elemental spirits, but they were tr jumping on people, trying to uh, make people have accidents and get hurt and hurt their knees and ankles. And, you know, we had a lot of injuries. So well, that's, anytime. That's what you're saying right there, Eric, is important because if you do something to your gym, you guys watching this video right now, if you do a cleansing, think about this. Are your students getting injured a lot? Do you have lots of injuries in your school? Because if there is injuries happening, that's those heavy energy still in a school that are affecting you on many levels. And so like Eric Paulson is saying, you. as you clean your, you clean your, your, your school, like we do, we, we clean ours often and you just don't have the injury. You don't have all the negative. In fact, people who are very negative to come to the school are very uncomfortable there. They either leave or they come back, say a new student, because they feel something different that they normally don't feel. So, so I say whatever. That's Paul right. Saying, very important, guys, to find whatever way it works for you. If you want the the Paulson protocol, maybe he'll create one for you guys to clean in your school. Very important to also do this. Do you remember, like the old? So the old churches were all based off of uh, location. So it was all like a church was built on a ley line. Ley lines. Right. So the energy was already in the church. So people would go to the church to receive this powerful energy field. So if you can make your make your gym a high vortex of energy, like like a ley line, uh, people can come and get energized at your school instead of coming in and taking everything that's there and leaving with it. I mean, I've walked into schools and you don't feel any, you feel like lack lack of energy like, in some like place. No life. It's like no life. Yeah. Lifeless. Yeah, and I've I've been to people's houses like that too. I'm like, whoa. It felt like a like a cement, a cinder block building with nothing in it. Right. Okay. Hey, Eric, let's get that. We, now, guys, Eric Paulson and I can sit down. We could talk for like a, a whole day here about this subject. So we're going to say we're going to save Eric more of this for another show. We're getting close Thanks. to our time here. So I want to I want to uh, Eric Paulson give you guys a good closing comment. Uh, I want to go back to the the martial art arena for a second, Eric. It's a, so. What, what do you see, Eric, uh, the future of what's happening in the martial art world? What do you see it going in the next couple of years? Well, everyone now is, wants to get a belt in jiu-jitsu. So jiu-jitsu has exploded um, with lockdown. Now everyone's an expert at jiu-jitsu and they're all sh posting all their techniques and uh, everyone's posting all their stuff. Everyone's an expert. Uh, that's what I've, I've found. And uh, a lot of people aren't, are not given any credit to where they're getting their information from. And, and that's a huge one. Uh, what they're doing is they're seeing a, a Instagram post or a TikTok post and they're copying it. And then they're not given any credit where credit's deserved, where they're learning their information from, or just how about a at Eric Paulson or, or a hashtag CSW. Because because they they want to pretend like oh I I've stumbled and created this on my own when it's like hey and, and then not only that I mean we're learning information that has been around for for thousands upon thousands of years right. you know there there are obviously unique uh, tweaks and variations that people are creating stuff but you know the movement the general movement or the move they, they've been around for for quite some time but how about giving a little credit to some people that you're learning some of your stuff from. You know, I see a lot of people, they're doing stuff and, and they give no credit. They watch videos or DVDs or downloads or YouTube, whatever, steal the move, teach it and not announce a credit to anyone. It's like me, 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 I, 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 mm. look what I learned, look what I know. 
look what I came up with. My favorite is look what I invented. It's right. Like, uh, uh, you didn't invent the wheel. It's always been there. And you just stumble across something new. I don't, Eric, I don't know if you saw my case Katami one night. I go and I did one of the moves. I go, thank you, Eric Paulson. I don't know uh, if yeah, it goes out here. I appreciate but... that. But the, again, Keiza Katami is is from judo and sambo and wrestling. I mean, but the variation but the you is, gave us, you gave us some good variation. The home Keiza Katami, the head and arm Keiza Katami. The, there's so many variations and stuff, but uh, a lot of the judo jujitsu world sambo they use it because it's effective and useful the jiu-jitsu world brazilian jiu-jitsu said oh it's a huge position that we don't we don't try because you get your back taken so it's super dangerous to do that and i'm like well you guys used to say the same thing about leg locks and now you're all attacking legs so mm -hmm. the new the new position for modern bjj is going to be keza Gatami. mark my word mm -hmm. you watch everyone's going to start doing Keiza Katami after there Josh BT. So, so there's your future Lister. of uh, Keiza Katami. So, so do you see like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu becoming like the uh, the foundation art, especially around the world, and just everything will be tentacles around it of other systems, but they'll still be coming uh, say Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? So well, like this will emerge, you think? I think that catch wrestling has been around for uh, quite some time. And a lot of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, there's so many black belts today in Jiu-Jitsu that they're all like, hey, what else is out there besides this? And they're seeing some really cool catch wrestling stuff, and then they're borrowing it and not giving an ounce of credit, and they're calling it modern Jiu-Jitsu. Right. Like the Shuto, so, like you see all the Shuto drills. No one ever gives credit to Shuto's Japanese. Because nobody even saw it. Greg Nelson, I used to teach Shudo seminars in the early 90s, and Greg Nelson laughed, and he said, guess what you should do? And I go, what? He goes, you should start teaching Shudo again, because mm -hmm. all the guys today have never seen it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, look, we're, we're going to let the, let the show come to an end here. This is uh, Eric Paulson, guys, a martial art uh, pioneer. of. Uh, he has his uh, CSW system. And what are the other systems, Eric, that you're currently teaching right now? You'd like to let everybody know? STX kickboxing, we have MMA, uh, uh, we have uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, catch wrestling, the CSW program, and boxing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we also have um, Lionel, who does the massage. He's got a lot of a lot of clients. It's like a HELOT style of healing massage. He does that at our school. Healing arts are just as important as the destruction arts yes, you have are. to learn both the highest level of a martial artist is healing not not so much hurting anymore you should have the ability to hurt and destroy somebody but you should also have the ability to heal and fix them also yeah so maybe that'd be our next show next show we talk we'll talk about the healing side of what persons uh some martial artists can do to heal their body from the traumas they receive okay guys uh thank you Eric Paulson. time Always great talking Thanks, to you, Eric. Uh, hopefully, we'll get his lovely wife Tanya one day have her have the woman's perspective of uh, martial arts on here. But uh, guys, I'm Dr. Patrick Price, and this is the Body Detective Show. Thank you for watching, and be tuned in the future for more fun shows coming, guys. Take care, everyone.